Hi everybody, I thought today that I'd share with you a little bit about how I keep myself organized in my knitting. Um, I've only been knitting for about three and a half years and would not even call myself intermediate yet. Um, it's very uh, common for me to print out a new pattern and not know how to proceed with it or to see a new stitch that I've never made before and need to look it up via YouTube or call my sister or visit the knitting store to learn how to do something. And so I found over these three years that I really need to keep myself organized and able to figure out how to concentrate in a way that allows me to be able to put something down and pick it back up when I have another minute free. Um, a lot of the time I find that I do some of my, mo my best knitting when I'm out and about, either in the car with the family or waiting for an appointment, or um, even outside while my children are playing. Um, I can get a lot accomplished in a short amount of time, but that also means that I'm often more distracted than I would be if I was, say, sitting on my couch while watching television and knitting or something like that. So I've developed a couple of things over the years, which I'm sure are not new, um, but they help keep me um, sure of what I'm doing and help me know exactly where I am in a pattern and ha you know, know that I have the tools to fix any problem that might arise. So I thought I'd show you first this little pouch. My sister made this for me. It's linen. It's a flat-bottomed bag. Hopefully soon she'll be selling them at her in her Etsy store. I really love it. I love the drawstring part of it. I love the quality of the linen. She did such a great job with it. And it's nice because it sits right up on its flat little bottom when I put it down. I'm knitting right now this pretty lace hat. It's the Art Deco hat by Melody of uh, Mandarins. And I, as you can see, it is pretty lacy. So I think that it's a more complicated knit than, um, you know, some of the more stockinette type knits that you can do. But it is by no means too difficult to accomplish because many of the stitches are just knitting and purling. It's just the combination of how you do them. That being said, it's easy to lose your place. So what I've started to do, and I've been doing this for a long time, is to stick stitch markers in for every repeat of the lace. So each repeat in this particular pattern is 22, inch, uh, 22 stitches. So I have a stitch marker. This one shows the beginning of the round for me. And this one shows the end of that uh, pattern repeat. So then once that pattern repeat is over, the pattern begins again. And I do another 22 stitches that are exactly the same as the other. So having these little stitch markers every 22 stitches makes it so that I can knit something and then be distracted and put it down and then pick it up later and find out exactly where I am. This time I was knitting at gym class and I got um, talking to a friend so I popped my knitting down and tonight when I go back to my pattern and I sit down at the couch I can see that I was exactly at the beginning of the round and I'm two stitches in and I'm re ready to go. I don't even need to figure out where I am. It's not complicated. There's nothing difficult about it. I love the stitch marker method. It's one of my favorite things to do to keep me organized and to keep me sure of what I'm doing. So I have that and I have my pattern tucked right into my little bag. A second thing that I do to help myself is to, here's the pattern. So how I help keep myself organized with my pattern is I check off every row that I do. And I also like to use post-it notes to help keep me very clear about what row I'm doing. I mean, oftentimes this whole sheet of information is very confusing if it's not carefully blocked off for each row, for me anyway. It's visually confusing. So if I use the post-it note, I know exactly where I am in my pattern. I can easily find my spot. I know today, tonight when I sit down, I am two stitches in, and I can immediately go to the third stitch. So that's how I keep myself organized on my paper pattern, which I stick right into my 
bag with my knitting project. So everything is all tidy and organized and ready to be either put into my handbag tomorrow when we're going on a, another adventure or pulled out tonight when I want to knit on it while we watch television or the news. The third thing that I found that has kept me very organized and ready to tackle any problem that arises in my knitting is to have a tool bag. This tool bag that I have, I purchased in uh, New York City at Pearl Soho, which is a very nice knitting store and sewing store. This keeps all of my knitting notions in one place, organized, and I pop this right into my handbag unless I'm knitting currently, in which case it's at the ready for me to use the things that are inside of it. So I'll dump those right out and I'll show you what I keep in my toolkit. Of course I have my post-it notes. They're ready in case my the ones that I'm currently using get you know aren't sticky anymore or I lose one of them. And they're also ready for the next pattern. So I love that they're it's not orange is not my favorite color, but I mean it's very eye-catching and it helps keep me um, sure of exactly where I am. It's a good highlighting color. I have the needles that I was using when I did the ribbing on this pattern. This particular brand is Lantern Moon and it is a fair trade company which I love. The company uses women that need jobs to make their needles and then gives them a fair wage for the work that they've done. So I like supporting them. Another thing that I have is what's called a needle gauge. And this has a ruler on the bottom and then it has these interesting holes on the top. And what these holes do is they help you figure out if your needle does not have its information on it. Oftentimes that little uh, name and number gets rubbed off. But if you have a needle gauge, you can immediately figure out where, what size needles you have. So you stick them into the hole and then when you come across the one that it fits perfectly in, you know that that's the size. See, these, this is a size six needle and it does not fit into the five. So I know that it is a size six needle and I can figure out if my pattern, what size needle my pattern calls for using my needle gauge. So that's another helpful thing to have with me. Of course, scissors, a necessity, a measuring tape. This one is another Pearl Soho find um, that I love. I try to keep this uh, away from my children because I don't want them to break it. That's how much I like it. I have a little clip-on book light in case I need a little help seeing something. A pen to mark things off. I have some yarn, some scrap yarn that I can use when I need to put, take some stitches off the needles or make a lifeline. This is very helpful to have in my bag, ready to go. Little chapstick. I have this giant needle, which I really like. I do not know the brand. I bought it from a yarn store that has closed. And I think it came, I don't think it came in a package. I think it was just, you know, a bunch of them stuck in a little jar. And I like this because it is easy to use with my large hands to get a lot of stitches off at once. It helps um, keep me in control of my live stitches as I'm, as I'm doing them. I also have two crochet hooks, which are great for doing crocheted borders on things or for picking up stitches that have somehow slipped off the needles. I can grab them very quickly and easily get them back where they're supposed to go. I have this little tin from Crabtree and Evelyn that I've had for years. And inside of it, I have my stitch markers. And all of the stitch markers in here are ones from Fringe Supply. So I have their black rubber ones, which are very nice. I have their um, brass round ones. And I have their removable stitch markers, which look like little safety pins with a little bulbous edge that goes over the needles easily. And um, all three of these I really like. In fact, I replenished my stash at Christmas time for my stocking so that I'd have them when I inevitably lose the ones that I currently have. And finally, I have this little pouch, which is a Lisport sack, I guess, change purse. And I bought this when I was 
um, in college. I remember that I was near the Metropolitan Museum of Art. We were at a, um, we had a field trip there and we went out for lunch into New York City and passed the little store for the sports sack. And I bought this little pouch for my change and now it has come in handy for my little needles to weave in ends and also any other little doodad that I need to keep track of. Like here are some antler buttons that I bought. Here are my sister's large stitch markers that I need to return to her. She lent them to me when I was using making something um, with big needles, a safety pin, and other little needles that somehow sort of always sneak out of the bigger bag and then get lost or poke me as I'm getting out my wallet and my purse. So if I keep them in this little change purse, it keeps them all safe and easy to get to. So I hope this little video helps you. I hope that um, if you have any tips for me, um, you will share them for me. Anything that I've missed that is a helpful tip for people that are knitting on the go or knitting while distracted, um, as mothers most often are. Um, if you are a new knitter, I encourage you to keep trying. Um, it's a very uh, stress relieving activity for me. I love to knit. Um, I'm not as prolific as I once was when I was um, first starting out, but I love picking something up and sort of making a couple of stitches, getting some of the um, stress out of my life, you know, making something that actually fits someone that they love to wear is a big reward. It's um, it's a lot of fun to knit. So I encourage you to keep working at it if you're trying to. If knitting's not for you, there's so many other crafts that are um, portable and that are fun. And I'd love to hear what your favorite craft is and how you make it manageable on the go and when you are the mother of young children. Have a great day. Hopefully I'll see you soon. And I hope that uh, you'll share some of your tips in the comments. Bye-bye.